Sarah Brotman, you are stunning. Even Thank more, you. same with Marcus is here. You guys are just like these real life gorgeous figures, even more attractive in real life <laughs> and so warm and amazing. So awesome. thanks for inviting us into your home in Las Vegas. Ever so delighted. Yay, I love you. You're so uh, amazing. Thank you. And it's such good energy here. Thank you. It's such good vibe. And we got to learn all your secrets. You're almost 55. Yes. And you've been living the raw life, the vegan life for a long time. Yes, so yeah. I want to know, everybody wants to know what first led you down this path? Like, how did you get into health? Well, it's funny um, how we are given these amazing bodies, these machines designed to run seamlessly for over a century if maintained well. But they forgot to give us the owner's manual. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I want the manual. Like, I know everybody yeah. needs the manual. How are we supposed to effectively care for and maintain such a valuable asset without clear guidelines. Mm -hmm. How? Mm -hmm. So the only, the only cues I had were to watch my parents, my creators. Those were the, uh, those were the only guidelines I had to, you know, I watched them and I saw what worked for them and what didn't work for them. And like my father, he was in the restaurant business and he owned Italian gourmet restaurants and mm -hmm. it was heavily laden in meats and animal products and just cheese and butter and, you know, it was just very rich food. Mm -hmm. And that's what he ate a lot. And a salad for him was like tomato and onion and a typical like Italian salad. And then there's my mother. Every day she made a salad for herself and us. Um, so she was the mother. She was the boss in our home growing up because my father was always at the restaurant. So you have this lady. She's in charge of four small children. And it was up to her. She was the boss. She went to the grocery store and she chose the food that was going to come into our home. And it was never, we weren't allowed any desserts, any sweets. It was normal for me not to have dessert growing up. I didn't even know that that was. That's basically. so good. Wow. It, yeah. Well, looking back, it wasn't. But now I'm so glad she was like that. And um, every day. So for us, our food was just relatively simple. It was uh, half of a peanut butter sandwich in the morning at, with a cup of tea for breakfast before school. And then lunch was always, again, I told him a half a tuna sandwich. He's like, a half a tuna. Your mom was like starving you, but we weren't starving. You know, it, yeah. it was enough food for us. And then <laughs> dinner was a huge salad. Every day she would make a salad and put it in four different bowls. And then the dinner, which was rarely a pot roast, but you know, tacos and, you know, just typical food, maybe some pasta. But, um, so as I was aging, you know, we, we, we fell in love with salads, me and my siblings. Mm -hmm. um, we just loved salads, even into our teens, right? So um, here's us. We're just get what teenager gets so excited over going to the vegetable stand, you mm -hmm. know? And we, we just would get so excited as teenagers. So now here we are at 18. And I remember I told my mom, I was suffering at 10. I told my mom, I go, you know, mom, I read, I lied. I said, I read that parents that will not give their children sweets while they're growing up, <laughs> when they turn 18, <laughs> they go to a grocery store and they buy a whole can of icing <laughs> and they eat it in one serving. <laughs> and she goes, okay, well, you can do that when you're 18. But for now, under this roof, <laughs> you're going to eat. So we didn't, the only thing, the nearest thing we got to sweets was peach yogurt and fruit salad with, with this <clears throat> um, sweet cream dressing my mom would make from, it was cottage cheese and, and sweetener and vanilla extract in the blender. And she poured that over our fruit salad. Yeah. And that was just so delicious to me. You know, but in the meantime, I see my girlfriends next door. I remember they were eating all these candy bars and I stopped by their house really quick and they're like, oh, 
it. And I'm like, oh my God, you guys are so lucky. And then I go home, see him a few <laughs> hours later. The same two girls are like, right? oh, we don't feel so good. Or we need a nap. It's crazy. Oh, so anyway, so here we are. Now we're teenagers and we are into this amazing food. And we see my father's food. It's just so delicious, the Italian gourmet fare, but it's just so bad for you, you know? And then we have my mom's gorgeous, you know, her, basically it was plant-based, a lot of her foods. And, you know, you just, we just started mixing them up, you know, my father's gourmet spices, you know, spices, Mm -hmm. Uh, can play it's the difference between night and day and food and you know so that we just started with my dad's dishes and we're like oh my god can you believe we can make pasta alfredo with that's good for you you know with just Mm -hmm. zucchini Mm -hmm. and you know it just started snowballing after that and we were like you know we really need to share this with the world because this was in 1995 and there was no vegan was brand new that word vegan people do, didn't even know how to say it they're like vegan you know <laughs> yeah and there was it, it just the world needed a restaurant like this and i know some people go oh well yours was not the first raw food restaurant understood it wasn't the first raw food restaurant but it was the first gourmet raw food restaurant that was so delicious that celebrities started to come to the restaurant and it just again snowballed into what it has become today and and your food's incredible so we're gonna do a food video after this make sure you guys subscribe for that and so when did you go all raw like when did at what point did you try I was all basically raw? All, all raw all, pretty much all my life wow. off and on I was like 80 80 percent raw all my life but in the restaurant, I became 100% raw. And did you notice differences in how you felt when you I did that? Said if th- if I said, if this wasn't a raw food restaurant, there's no way I could be working 14 hours a day, seven days a week. Because we were kids, we didn't know how to run businesses. All we knew was how to serve food. And we were working 14 hours a day, wow. seven days a week in, mm-hmm. the, in the raw food restaurant. But it gave us so much energy. That's and, the thing. And one day, my brother decided at around three o'clock, he, we closed between three and five. It's really slow. So he decided to make pasta, cooked pasta on the hot plate. We had one hot plate in the restaurant. And the, the, the sauce he made was this Oh, it was just this amazing coconut cream mm-hmm. sauce with like spices from Thailand. It was just so beautiful. And he put it on top of the pasta and the waitresses and I and my brother, we all ate the, the, the pasta. Girl, we had to open at five and we did, but we were so so tired. Right? It's such a big difference. Oh my God. The difference is night and day and from raw food and cooked food. It's huge. If somebody's watching and they currently eat like that and they want to get healthy, they are inspired by you. They want to try the raw, but they have a hard time like getting through those cravings and they're surrounded by people who don't eat that way and they want to get there. Like, do you have any advice for people how to start, what to do? Well, um, yeah, uh, I would just eat before you go out. If you're going to be around your friends, that's what mm-hmm. I always do. When I go out with him and we're going to go to a restaurant with friends, he goes, he comes downstairs and he says, you're eating, but we're going out. And I go, that's why I'm eating, you know, and I get really full off of my food. But um, for somebody that wants to get into raw food, I, I always say, th- th- go the way I went fruit salads and savory salads. Mm-hmm. That's that's the way I became raw as a child. But I think also um, you, you got to make some fun foods, you know, get creative. And I think a really good way to get creative and build your, you know, hone your raw food skills is get yourself some nori rolls. That's sushi papers. Mm-hmm. And start throwing stuff in there and wrapping it up. It's so fun. It's so creative. I'm going to show her upstairs uh, a wrap that I love to do on the go. I make it on the go, but it's just, you could put anything inside of those. It's so good. It's so satisfying. It is so satisfying. And Mm -hmm. then you make yourself a good sauce, a dipping sauce, Mm -hmm. you know, and 
that's that's basically how I I would just let people you know give them uh, some some food in the restaurant and some nori wrappers and they went crazy. Yeah. Um, some of my students. That could and do this. okay, so how has your eating evolved over the years? Have you found there's ways that work for you personally and ways that don't work? Like higher fat, lower fat, higher fruit, lower fruit, and has it changed at all? I don't really even pay attention to that. Yeah. I just do eat whatever makes me feel good. And I know I, you don't like cacao nibs. I wish I could. For some reason, I love cacao. For some reason, it acts like such a stimulant to me when I have it. And I get so high and I love it. But then I get like a real crash from it. I don't know why. Oh, it's like, sounds like it's coffee. It, yes. It acts like a stimulant like coffee to me. I really, it's unfortunate because I love it. I just... But see, so you don't do well on cacao. I do. I love cacao. I, I pour it on my <laughs> watermelon. But um, I was trying to see. Do, now, now, make sure you notice. Do you notice anything different? But I don't. Thankfully, I don't do. I, I'm okay with cacao. But what was your question again? <clears throat> How your eating oh. has evolved over the years. Like, do you eat different now than when oh. you started out? Or so, like, even what you currently eat in a no, day? I know people will wonder. Everything is the same. It's just raw foods, you know? And I, if I'm really, if, if, if I want to go gourmet, you know, I'll do a pasta if I'm feeling like I want to do pasta. So I'll make the zucchini pasta. But the only thing that's changed is since I started working out hardcore training, I need protein. And as a vegan, you know, it's just so hard to grow muscle. And, you know, I see these women at the gym and they're just so muscular and I'm <laughs> you look good. But yeah, so I was looking I, at you in the kitchen upstairs. I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys. Like in person, even on camera, you look amazing. But in person, I'm just blown away. Your body is thank amazing. You. And you both look super fit. So what's the fitness routine? What have you done to ask the protein? Me if I had a butt lift. I did. Butt Her butt is perfect. Yeah. I was like, wow, Kara's butt. <laughs> I didn't expect it. It's so nice. Yes. It and that's that. from the gym. I didn't expect it either. <laughs> yes. I said, I just I had I got I just started to focus on the backside. And boy, it's so receptive. It's paid off. But you know what? Uh, that's the only thing that's changed. So I really upped my cooked food intake as far as protein goes. So I do a lot of tofu, a lot of purple potatoes, purple potatoes. They're high in antioxidants. I hear the blue yes. zones, they eat a lot of those. Yes. Yeah. They do. And uh, lentils and I think that's it. But those are the three cooked things I do eat. And other than that, I'm 80% raw because I just feel so good on raw and salads. You know, I need the salad every day. But to get, you know, muscle, I need to be pounding down a lot of tofu and lentils and the purple potatoes and my food intake. Before I used to not, I ate like a bird, but now I eat so much food. You do? Yeah. I eat a lot. And, and I had a little scare a few, a couple of months ago. I was way too skinny. I saw your post. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, and it was just the more I ate, I, I'd get on the scale the night before and I'd be like, 118. Oh, my God. 118. And then I'd weigh myself the next morning and I'd be back to 116. I don't like to be too skinny. Too. I don't so like to be too skinny. What was too. going on? Why was that happening? And how did you? It was, it was because I was uh, intermittent fasting too much. I going till three, four, five without eating just because I didn't have an appetite. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, OK, girl, you have got to start with a cream with a nut um, creams, you know, mm -hmm. and because those are very fattening and uh, just started eating a lot. So now I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I was such an advocate for not eating breakfast. Really? Because doing the intermittent fasting. Yeah. Exactly. And I just feel so good. Yeah. And I could go for, I could go all day without eating it if need be. The only reason I would is because I'm like, I don't want to turn into an anorexic. No. But and have you ever not felt good over the years? Have you ever gone through phases where you're like, oh, maybe this isn't working or like questioned it or no, ever never. gotten sick or it's always been good? I never questioned anything. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you, right? I've just been eating on this way practically all my life. And I, it's I amazing. It's amazing to me that your mom, like, that's so amazing. She incorporated all those raw foods when you were little. Yes. She really didn't know that much what she was doing because she used to give us 
orange juice in our bottles, thinking that was she was doing healthy. Yeah. But that was pure sugar. Yeah. I was going to ask you what you think about fruit or like eating too much. Like I do a lot of juicing fruit. Do you think that I should maybe scale back on that? What do you think the effects can be of too much fruit or too much fruit juice for like us raw vegans or for anybody? Well, too much fruit juice and fruit is... Every time you eat fruit, you have to brush your teeth afterward. Make yeah. sure you do that because a lot of vegans have problems with their teeth from from the fruit and the fruit juices. Mm-hmm. And um, the fruit juice is just too concentrated sugar. And I just want to stay away from sugar. Sugar causes wrinkles, mm-hmm. even fruit sugar. Any it, When this sugar is unattached from its fruit, you're looking at problems. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe I, I'll I'm scale sorry. back. Maybe I'll try. I've been thinking about trying like higher greens and lowering the fruit. Have you ever done like fruit cleanses or any cleanses, juice fruit cleanses, cleanses, fruit cleanses or juice cleanses or water, water fast, dry fast? I did fast? water cleanses. You did? Yeah, in the past. And, you know, I just, I said, I'm just going to do it just to see what all the hubbub is about. And, uh, you know, so I, I said, I heard you're supposed to feel spiritual. Oh yeah. my God, my fourth day, I was so spiritual. I love it. And, and, and my <laughs> friend said, yeah, it's because you're close to death. You need food. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. He didn't get it. But um, yeah, it was amazing. It was a seven-day fast. And have you ever just... No, I've never done a water fast or a dry fast. And oh. I think people need to be careful doing those, right? Like oh, I always recommend the if they're doing them over a few days, like even water fast, do you think they should go to a place? I don't know. I've never done it, but I really want to do a water fast. For a water fast, I haven't done it because I have small kids. I feel like you have to be more bed bound and resting, right? Really? Don't no. you think or no? I was working my butt off. Wow. Yeah. In fact, yeah. And, and I remember my ex-boyfriend, I'd be like, why don't you try to fast? Why don't you try to fast? And he's like, I, I, I can't now because I've got this major thing coming up. And I'm like thinking, that's more reason to fast. So mm-hmm. you have all this power behind you. Fasting is amazing. I love it. And, and it gives you so much energy. But again, you know, you, you asked, should people go to a doctor? I think they should try it themselves, you know, without going to a professional and just feel if they feel ill, if they're, you know, then maybe stop the fast. Um, listen but, to your body, right? I think yeah, people are really disconnected body. and need to listen to themselves more, right? Don't you think? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And don't you feel like, I know you said spiritual, that's part of the reason I eat this way with the raw foods. I just, the, literally the first day I went raw, I literally felt like my true self. It was a huge difference in how I felt. Absolutely. And just like my higher self, more spiritually connected. Mm-hmm. So is that something you notice eating like the plant foods in general over all these years? Do you think you'd notice a difference if you were eating like the standard American diet? Absolutely. Well, thing? I did. I did uh, <laughs> maybe 20 years ago. Oh my God, I had the worst nightmare of my life. And I called my sister and I told her, I, it was such a bad nightmare. And I called my sister and she said, did you eat meat? And I said, oh my God, I had a hamburger last night. I was out. I, I'm not perfect. This was 25 <laughs> years ago and I'll never have it again. But I had a cheeseburger or a hamburger. And that night, the night terror, and it just led me to believe, you know, how, what do you expect? How can you expect to be feeling all, you know, happy and gay? It's true. <laughs> and, and and spiritual. If you're eating an animal that has just been so tortured and terrified his entire life and seen such horrific things with his eyes, and this is in his mind and his cortisol levels are through the roof, and you're going to eat that and you're going to expect to feel anything but what? You know, of course, and, and, and this is why I think there's so many problems with kids with ADD, ADHD, hyper, you know, I think it's because of the, the meats. And I know back when we were little, they didn't inject the cows with such so many different antibiotics and hormones. And I'm not sure how slaughterhouses worked in the 70s, but I've seen some slaughterhouses today and they're pretty horrific. It's pretty crazy. And I feel like it's so common for people to eat those animal products. I don't like to call them animal products, like those animals, because they're not products, right? But those animals, like every meal, like bacon and eggs for breakfast or like chicken on their salad for lunch. And then, you know, roast beef for dinner. It's just so excessive. So excessive, right? right? I can't believe people still eat even bacon. Yeah, me too. It's absolutely crazy. Okay. Like, I thought with age we get wiser. You yeah, know? and it ages you too, sun. right? Oh not even God, it's like the, yes. not even just the way you feel, the way you look. Yeah, I've never heard a doctor say, "Hey, you know, maybe you should, you know, 
stop, slow down on the fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. But how many times have you heard the doctor say, you better slow down if not cut out the animal uh, proteins? Yeah. Yeah. And okay. I know I just mentioned like how we look too. You look amazing. And I've said that like 54 Thank times you. since we arrived, but we have to learn all your secrets. Like everything from your hair to your skin, you are almost Thank 55. You. Like any secrets, any foods you think like that are high in antioxidants or anything that keep us looking young? Well, uh, I do know that sugar is the enemy. Uh, he and I went on a vacation once and I looked in the mirror after two, I, I gave in. I'm trapped on a boat for two weeks with these people <laughs> and this diet. <laughs> when was this? Oh God, it was like four years ago, five yeah. years ago. Yeah. And I, 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 I kind of gave in after six days and then I got into the desserts. Oh no. And I'm not a dessert girl, but it started. And I'm like, oh my God, the desserts. I like the ice cream with that piece of cookie in it <laughs> and the chocolate drizzle, you know. Girl, it's within two weeks. I'm like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? I could not believe what that sugar has done to my face. So being at my age, anything bad you do or good you do to yourself will show up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And especially the bad. So like it, eating sugar is just, it shows up on my face so bad. Yeah. Sugar cro cross links with something in, in your skin and it just... It's just really bad for your skin. Okay, yeah, take that in, everyone. Sweet. Okay, and, and back. That is your mortal enemy, sweet. Okay, if you want to look good when you're aging. And back to all this in a second. I want to talk more about the foods and your hair, like the sea moss, everything. But it just came to me too. I know when a lot of people age, you know, they turn 55, 60. A lot of them, like, it's really common. At least where I'm from in Toronto, it's like everybody just wants to retire. They're doing a job they don't like, and they, you know, hit retirement. But I notice with a lot of people I interview who are more health conscious, like they're still so passionate about projects and creating so much as they get older. Yeah. So how is that for you and Marcus? And do you think like the health plays a big part into all of that and where you go into your 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond? Well, uh, decline is inevitable in our physicality. Um, it's going to happen. It, at what rate is it going to happen though, is the question. And I want to be doing stuff when I'm 70. I want to be swimming in the ocean. I want to be running with hopefully my grandkids and playing with them. And I want to be doing, I want to be as active now as I am in my 70s and beyond. But in order for that to happen, there are so many things I need to be doing right now. That's the thing. In order for that to happen. So as far as retiring goes, I mean, I, I would never retire... I, I can't. Right now, what I'm doing, what I'm doing today is preparing for my golden years. Mm -hmm. And I, I started taking dancing. I'm working on my cognitive and um, the, the weight training three, four times a week. I go into the gym and, you know, I have a, you know, just nurturing a loving relationship. Yeah, I can tell. Your your oh. relationship is so amazing. I feel like you guys, I can just tell from being around you here before the interview too, you have so much oh. respect for each other. Oh. And from what I've seen with studies and marriages, they say the greatest indicator of a long-term marriage is the respect you have for each other, even more than the physical attraction. Wow. So I can just see it and I can just feel like you guys are just complete destiny can meant you? to be. I know. Like, okay, take us through again for anybody who don't doesn't know. And even if you do, everybody loves hearing this story again. Where did you guys meet? We're in Vegas. You guys met in Vegas, mm -hmm. right? And take us through the love story and how things have been over Aww. the years. Well, I don't know. I just saw him at Home Depot. <laughs> it was really Home Depot, the yeah, hardware store? it really was. And I'm like, oh my God, maybe I can pretend to go in there and buy something. Because he was going in there. He caught your eye? You were like, this guy's cute? Well, I knew who he was. You did? I from did. YouTube or just from around? I, I, I forget. I think from YouTube. And I said, oh, my God, I have to say hi to him. You know? And I'm like, oh, hi, Marcus. Marcus, hi. And I remember he's like, oh, hello. And and then, I don't know. I, I think he asked me out. And, and I went to his house. And, um, but it was more for, you know, I just wanted to meet him. I didn't want a boyfriend. Yeah. I, and I was on my way out too. I was heading to California to open a restaurant. Yeah. And, 
And then he's so cute. He's just smitten and he's in love. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> Come on, Kara. But I didn't want to fall in love, you know? That's Same why way. it happened. That's when it happens when you're not looking. Right, right, right. And um, anyway, so he took me to EDC. And I remember I, I was walking out of the bathroom and I saw him there and I go, oh my God, I'm in love. And that I was like, okay, I am, I am officially in love with this young man. And that was it. Yeah. And you guys have been together a long time, right? Yes. 10 years. <laughs> I remember I was living with my mom and she goes, I'm getting my stuff ready. And she goes, are you moving in with that guy, Kim? <laughs> I go, I sure I am. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you guys, I don't think you're married, right? You're not married. No. But to me, it feels like you're married. Like it totally. feels like you're married. And it it's a totally long-term, does. It's a long-term relationship. So any advice for anybody how to make it work, like through well, ups and downs? You gotta pick somebody that um that is adorable to you. And I, I tell Marcus all the time, I'm like, thank you for being so lovable, you know, because he's very lovable. And um uh, you know, he's just ticked off all the boxes. You know, he's not lazy. He's a hard worker. He, he eats well. He treats me very nice. I can't be with any man that um, gets angry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I And I know a lot of, but if somebody's watching, you know, sh- well, you know, I'm normal. I get angry. Well, you know what? That's fine. You do you, and I'm going to do me. I can't be around that because as we as were talking, a woman, it's not nice to be around that with a man, right? Yeah. And as we were talking about in our in our toxic video, you know, I grew up with that stuff. My mom was not very nice to me, and she yelled a lot. And I'm like, I I I didn't have a choice when I was younger, but I have a choice now. Mm-hmm. And also. Um, Paying attention to red flags so you don't have to deal with them later, you know, after you guys are kind of stuck and in love, quote, in love. But yeah, those red flags, uh, um, you have to listen to those too. I think in any relationship too, right? Like friendships, business relationships, anything. Yeah. Don't you feel like with the red flags, it's yeah. really important we listen to our gut and yes. follow those red flags? I remember I was standing in front of the restaurant once and this guy who worked at the next door um, business was, we'd flirt, you know, after the... Mm-hmm. You know, the restaurant was closed or whatever. We'd flirt a little bit. And I remember one day these boys were walking down the street and he turns to them and he goes, what are you looking at? And I go, <laughs> and then he, see, he goes, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I'm like, no, he's not. <laughs> that was my red flag. Because yeah. that, that shows you this is a super jealous guy and he's possessive. And I don't want to be around that either. It's good you have those boundaries. Oh, yes, that's true. And that's why you're And you know what? You like also, this. I, you know, I also would write stuff. I don't know if you ever have what you want in a man. Mm-hmm. You I'm know? all into that. And like, what you don't with want. With manifesting a law of attraction, yeah. do you believe in that and all that? I totally do. Okay, good. Me too. I love that. And that work, you did that before Marcus? I did. And also, uh, but before Marcus and I, before I met Marcus, I knew I was, I had been alone for a few years from my ex-boyfriend of 14 years. And I said, okay, I know I need to work on myself, uh, do some work on myself and, you know, just Mm -hmm. first before- In order to attract the right partner. Yes. And I think that helped too. You know, I was listening to, you know, a lot of Tony Robbins back then. Um, And who are your favorite channels now? Like, or favorite people to listen to or favorite books? You are. Aw, thanks. Um... I, uh, just me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I forget right now. I yeah. have a few. And okay, I was going to ask you too, if you didn't meet Marcus, do you think you would have ever dated somebody who wasn't vegan or no? Or do you think that that's possible for relationships? People to be like, oh, could yeah. you be with somebody who who eats like Personally, standard American? Or I can't, but I, I've had a few boyfriends in the past, and you would, they weren't vegan, but you would never know it because as soon as we started dating, I'm the I'm the I make the food, mm-hmm. and they fell in love with the food, and I turned them vegan. Because, well, for starters, I can't, no, I can't date somebody who's... Like eating yeah. animals and eating... I just and it's a different can't. vibration, because right? Because also when you guys are intimate, you're still getting that, you know, stuff. I feel like you do. I feel like maybe you get that stuff that they're eating you and do. stuff. I know. You do. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, you, you. that's like, you're so different. It's like, 
somebody who loves Trump and somebody who hates Trump coming together. It just doesn't it's work. somebody who's pro-vaccine and, and va anti coming together. I, it just, I don't know how that would even work. So I've never dated, none of my, I've never dated somebody. Who, I'm sure they were not vegan when we started, but during the relationship, they were vegan. Yeah, and how do you think you've made vegan work this long while like looking and feeling so good? You know, some people feel like they fall apart on it, it doesn't work. Like, what are the keys to success for you on this lifestyle? I don't, I guess just a lot of food. I guess I was kind of falling apart when I wasn't eating much food and all I did was dial up the food a little bit. And I did start, you know, uh, to put on the weight, you know, it wasn't only the, the nuts made into cream. It was also some cooked stuff. I started this stew. I made like a stew recipe I got from, um, um, secrets of the blue zone. Mm -hmm. They make this do just a bunch of vegetables and water. So I started that. And then I put a big old dollop of that cream made of nuts, fattening nuts. In yeah, there. exactly. You know, and I just fattened myself up. Mm -hmm. And you look great. And okay, when you eat the cooked food now, when you incorporate some of it, do you think it's important to eat raw food with it? Do you eat a salad with it? Or do you take enzymes with it or no? No, I, Marcus does take enzymes. And you know what? I, I was telling my son the other day, I made a big old healthy salad. And I do sometimes have cravings, but no, I don't. I think that's the last time I made. <laughs> I made a pasta. You did, but not, but not raw. It was cooked pasta. Yeah. And I told my son. I said, "My God," I said, "Let me tell you what happened to me tonight. I made a big old salad. You know, just with it's so good. You know that you think it's me a meal with purple potatoes in there. And I said, I ate the salad, and I felt so good." And then I ate the pasta. I didn't even finish it. And no. I said, Nan, I, I just can't believe that it, it is. It's high vibrational. Oh, my God. And then the pasta. And brain fog and stuff, too. Do you notice brain fog? Oh, and yeah, that brain fog and, yeah. and food hangover. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, my old roommate, I remember he, he, wait, he'd have such puffiness in the morning when he'd wake up. He was swollen. And... I didn't realize that that's from cooked food. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize that. So cooked food makes you all swollen. Inflamed, right? Inflamed, yes. Swollen, inflamed. Yes. When I was just now in Disney World, I was eating some cooked food. And I have fake wedding rings, you know, that mm -hmm. I wear. Mm -hmm. and, and I went to take it off at night. I couldn't take it off. Wow. Because I was so swollen slash inflamed from the cooked food. Interesting. But when you eat a raw food diet, you just feel so good. You feel like after you eat a lot of food, you feel like getting up and dancing, not going to bed or no. taking a nap. Yeah, right. Like Music you, sounds better. You just feel oh, and you attract yes. better. Everything's just better. Yes. It's yeah. like you got the, the world has a beautiful filter on it. You mm -hmm. know, It's like a life changing, I feel like, for people. I just wish yeah. more people could learn about it and see how it feels, you know? Yeah. yeah. And there was this guy in a restaurant. He, he came up to us. He said, come on, come on. You could tell me. What was in there? What was in that food? He thought we put something in <laughs> right? there. He was just so wired. And you guys, you and Marcus, you still go to dinners. Like some people think, oh, this lifestyle is so boring. You can't socialize anymore. Like you're missing out on connections with people. Do you feel that way? Or do you guys still get dressed, dressed up? You still oh, go yes. out. And what do you eat when you go to a restaurant, like a regular restaurant? Well, he eats, Marcus eats. For me, I prefer not to oh, eat. Oh, you eat before. Yeah. Yeah. Because... You know, um, you have to stay away from certain type of foods that is just going to age you and kill you. And that is trans fats, the hydrogenated fats, uh, the, the pesticides that are on those vegetables in restaurants. True. And, y you know, 90% um, of foods in conventional grocery stores, if you try and go in there and try and find something healthy, you're not. Like 90% of those foods have some sort of trans fats in them. Crazy, right? 
And it's with the amazing. pesticides, like I've done more research about that lately. I think they can affect us a lot, right? Like Absolutely. they say strawberries have 22 different pesticides tested on them. And just think how that could affect our nervous system or who knows, things like dementia or Alzheimer's. Like I'm not a doctor or strokes. Like I just think like maybe these things might happen. So do you guys eat all organic? Is that really important to you? Or he, do you sometimes? He doesn't. Marcus doesn't. You know, he says you don't want to live in fear. Yeah. Don't live in fear. And I understand and appreciate that that type of mentality but you know for me i i don't know i i'm not fanatical about anything except when it comes to my body <laughs> and i don't like putting anything you know unorganic or pesticides it. and i know people are gonna be like well yeah put those implants in you well at <laughs> least i eat right okay yeah. i mean i i know i did that but and you haven't had problems from I them, right? God, no. I was telling Kara before we got on here, just honestly, after breastfeeding my two kids, I've been thinking about getting them. And I mean, they look great, right? I see some stories where people are like, oh, they have problems. But then other people like Elizabeth and a lot of my friends who are like, I feel amazing. I've never had a problem. And I think it must make a difference if you're healthy. Like if you yes. choose to eat healthy food or not, or if you're like drinking every day and eating burgers and you have them, it might affect you differently, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just wish so bad I could change with you right now because <laughs> I'm at the stage now where I don't want them. Really? I, I know I, Elizabeth oh, is like that too. I find people oh, are always like that. They're how like, old is Elizabeth? She's 63, oh, I think. okay. Well, she's, she's older too. Yeah. And she's like, well, I got them so long ago. If I could go back, I wouldn't have got them. I feel like a lot of people say that too. Yeah. As, <laughs> I know when I'm older now, it's like, I don't want them big. I feel like an older woman should have a little bit more, you know, smaller. <laughs> um, but I just like, I just, they're not gigantic. I they think are they're gigantic, great. gigantic, but I just wish they were like a size B cup. I, I really would, wouldn't mind that. And um, I don't feel like that discounts you like health wise at all. You know, people are like, oh, well, she has a, like, look at you, you know? And it's about how we feel too, right? Like yeah. you look amazing. Like well, you know, I saw this, I was on a beach and once, and I saw these two women walking in bikinis and I'm, I, one of them was like in her thirties and the other one looked like she was in her sixties. And I'm like the one in her sixties, I couldn't believe that. That's a six year old woman. Look at that body. I was, and I was waiting for her to come closer. I was going to say, girl, sorry, not no offense, little young woman, but girl, you are doing great. Looking good. High five. Yeah. But as she approached me, I'm like, Oh, she's 38 too. She's young. I yeah. thought she was older. And all for all of that awe, shock and awe just totally dissipated because anybody, any girl can look good young, you know, in their 30s true, and 40s. It's true. But let's see you when you're 50s and 60s, if you can hold on to that. And if you want to, you know, I think raw foods is the way or 80 percent 80 percent raw i agree with that because i know for a lot of people too it's extreme to do 100 so even yeah. just doing 80 you're doing more raw food you know i yeah. think it makes a big difference well at 41 now i want to be someone who looks amazing oh. at 55 60 65 so what do you think i can incorporate now or those of us watching who want to like age better any other like aging gracefully tips or well you know any it, other a lot of it starts from within and that sea moss is amazing your sea moss is amazing. Okay. I've told you guys on the channel before I had a haircut just unexpectedly by an LA stylist uh -huh. and he watches my channel. So he's amazing, but he knows I didn't like the haircut. It yeah. just felt like too much off. Yeah. And I was like, oh no. So I got on your sea moss because I was researching how can I get my hair to grow fast. Uh -huh. And I made it into gel and I swear it made my hair grow back so fast. It was insane. Oh my Even my daughter was like, what happened to your hair? It's crazy. And I can see like your hair has had the biggest transformation I've noticed. I completely, I, 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 it's like my butt. I don't know. So look at this. It's like, <laughs> as I age, I'm not declining. I'm getting better. Yeah. And I love this. And there's no way I could be improving on dead food. Exactly. On a dead food diet. Right? I just, I, I, I cannot believe how like, I feel like, I don't know. This is just, my life is really weird lately. I, I, I'm surprised. You, you, you commented on my butt. No, I was like, I did. I'm like, I, my butt has never looked like that in my entire life. And you're 55. So like how, almost 55, right? So yeah. how inspiring is that? Like we don't have, we can still live yeah. amazing lives we as we get older. Decline as, <clears throat> yes, but no, it doesn't have to be. It, 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 decline is inevitable. Oh, 
right? But at what rate are we going to decline at? Yeah, you're and on we fire. Can slow it down. So intermittent fasting, amazing. You know what? I love intermittent fasting too. Like usually for a long time, when I'm not traveling, I pretty much at home stick to stop eating around three or four. And I notice a big difference in how I feel. Like you sleep so much better. And I feel like it's a big difference because if we eat too close to bed, our body's working so hard when we sleep, right? To digest yeah. the food and doesn't get as proper right. of a rest, do you think? That's what I feel Absolutely. like. Absolutely. And then it's not doing things that it, sh- that it should be doing when we're sleeping, like cleaning out your brain and cleaning out other stuff and working yeah. on, you know, um, zapping little cancers, you know, that's sprouting up away, you know, it should be in healing mode. We, we should, our body is technically designed to be in healing mode from 10 PM to 2 AM. So those are the times that I need to be in bed. And I, uh, my child, again, my child, please go to bed at 10 PM. He's over 30. And I still call him and tell him, you need those healing hours. You need the healing hours between 10 PM and 2 AM. Really? It makes a difference at those hours? Yes. Why? Those hours. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know exactly why, but there's an amazing book that you all should download. It's a free download. It is called Heal Yourself 101. And you get it at healyourself101.com. Free download. And in it, it describes and explains everything on. Yeah, It's a good book. I downloaded that book when I first went raw in 2016, and it's so good. Yeah, and then I got the Prosperity Secret, all the books are so good. And you talked about cleaning out. I know you guys have video on your channel about enemas. So have those been a big thing in your health journey? Like, do you still do enemas or do you do colonics? Do you do any other things like that for clients? Well, I know when he, when Marcus is sick, I remember when we first met, he was sick and his voice was raspy and I said, want to have sex? (laughs) <laughs> and I go, just kidding. He goes, oh, are you kidding? And he goes, I'm going to go do an enema. He went and did an enema. He came back 15 minutes later. Let's have sex. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, he's a different person. Right? No, my kids got a really bad cold a couple weeks ago and it was really bad yeah. from school. And then my daughter, I still breastfeed her. She comes into my room at night and I caught it and it was like a stomach thing too. And I did an enema and I was like, oh, my stomach felt better right away. Can you And my daughter that? had had the stomach thing for like a week or two. And she's like, I wish I could do an enema. But she's 11. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> you know how it is with your kids. Yeah. Like a fine line these days. Yeah, You know, right. you got to watch. Is, is child abuse. I'm giving my daughter an enema. Somebody finds out. Like, it's just like, I don't know. Oh, God, but enemas right. when you're sick, amazing. Amazing, right? Um, or like parasite cleansing. I don't know. Like a few years ago, I did a couple enemas and I noticed parasites. Sorry if that's too much information. I feel like I can say anything to you. But wow. I was like, what the heck, right? What the heck? I had no idea I had them. I and that. then I started getting on uh, foods that I thought were antiparasitic, like the pineapple, the garlic, the onions, like all these things. And then I took, I think it was, I think Marcus, this is the parasite uh-huh. free, right? I took that. I got out so many parasites. I, <laughs> I guess you've never had can that. Can you believe I was that? so grossed out. When I first saw them, I would lay in bed and I would think, oh my God, I heard they're active in the night. I couldn't sleep. <gasps> it was the most traumatic thing. But then I think I cleared them all out. <laughs> but so this was a long, this was years and years ago. <gasps> so yeah, it's pretty crazy what can be inside of us. Yes. And can you imagine if you're eating all this food, like the bad food, you know, and stuff from... Like, do you think it can stay inside of us, like old waste and stuff, or no? Like some yes, people think there's does. old waste, and it's, it's. I think so too. Yeah, they, they say. Well, with colonics, people have had colonics and stuff has come out. That people, colonic, the people that do colonics have seen just some really old stuff come out from decades old stuff. And then it's amazing the difference you notice when you like clean that out. The difference on your mind, right? Oh yes, that's just the biggest thing. I feel like. Yeah, and when I fasted for seven days, girl. I was actually clairvoyant. Like everything is just so clean and pure. I love it. Oh, the mind. My mind was so fast and on it. Everything basically was. What kind of water did you drink? It's just good water. Yeah. Spark, nature, sparkling. Oh, yeah, because people will wonder, what kind of water? You guys have these nice water jugs all outside the house. Like, everything has good energy here. I feel like everything <sighs> is really respected and taken care of. Yeah. And even I can tell with the water bottles. So people will wonder, <laughs> what water are you guys drinking? It's it, like... Yeah, it's just it's natural spring water. And it's in glass bottles, right? Yeah, it's in glass <clears> bottles. <throat> I try and avoid plastic as much as possible. And you guys get it delivered? You can get it delivered? Yes. That's a good service. And you guys like living in Vegas? Mm. 
I mean, I, I don't like the air here. Um, I prefer living near an ocean or in, in the mountains somewhere. But um, we do, we are luckily uh, just an hour, maybe 40 minutes away from Red Rock. So we get to go there a couple times a week and breathe fresh air while we hike on um, deformed rocks, which is so good for your feet. You know, all these shoes and flat surfaces we walk on for decades, all of our life. It's like we have a cast on our feet. And then, you know, when we twist our ankle, you know, we're looking, we're, we're blaming the hole for, you know, for the ankle twist when actually it's our fault because we never have walked in nature like this. True. So it's so important to get out in nature at least twice a week, once or at twice least. a week. Yeah. And that's where I throw on my barefoot shoes because barefoot shoes I found, they don't work on flat surfaces like when we take walks around the neighborhood mm -hmm. um yeah that must be hard and on the modern surfaces modern right? surfaces i do wear walking shoes but a natch in nature oh you got to get in your barefoot shoes and just deform your feet you know on those yeah. just surfaces it's just so good for your feet and and i feel like it must like combat stress is there any other any tips or advice you have for people to reduce stress i think in these days with all the social media and working especially like me i'm a mom two kids and the channel and all these things like for those of us who carry a bit of stress any advice for how to reduce it uh 15 minutes a day of of um meditation is the silver bullet to that. It, I was going to ask if you meditate. Amazing. It's amazing. Yes. And I have to, and I notice a difference when I don't because meditating, it just, it, it sets you up to deal with whatever, you know, is thrown your way, whatever you come across during the day, you can handle everything so much better when you're just meditating does something to your brain. So you're not as reactive, right? When things yeah. happen, and I got to do that. It's not my opinion. It is a fact that it, it changes your, your brain the way it is. And, um, yeah, that is the best thing. It, it helped me not bite my cuticles. I mean, that's serious. I, I it's a bad habit I've take I've brought since childhood is biting my cuticles. Meditation was the only thing that was able to stop. That. I know. I hear people who say they had ADHD, all these things. They meditate, and it's totally changed their life. Do you have a oh, routine sure. for how you meditate? Like I know some people stare at a candle flame, right? Or like I, they I listen like to, to the, or they listen to the heat. Like, I, I just close my eyes and get centered, and wherever I am, I just and, and block. You know, start fighting all the things that you know, all those words out of my brain. But um, I, there's this cute guy I started meditating to. He's the one that got me into it. He's like this monk. Aaron Doughty, no. I don't uh, know, but I'll give you the link so yeah. in case you might. I have people try this out. Okay. Uh, um, he's just so cute. He's some monk. And I, when I started with him, he's got a YouTube video. It's, it's just 15 minutes and well, I'd be thinking something, but what about, and he'd answer it. Now you don't want to do it. You know, everything I thought he'd answer. It's just the most beautiful thing. So, and it's just really basic. It's simple. It's, and it got me into it that, that short little 15 minute video. And it's, changed my life. Wow. So yeah. I can is, tell you seem pretty zen oh, and pretty the chill. That's the best thing for, yeah. for, to remain calm. Yeah. Okay. And another topic I was thinking, your son. So your son, did you raise him completely yes. vegan? Wow. So do you have any advice for how to make that work for yes, people? Yes. You're the mother and you're the boss and you, whatever you buy, it, it, you are the boss because you are taking care of you, you are the boss. You are taking care of this child. So whatever you want in the house, you know, it's, it, you're the boss. Yeah. So I remember I just never had anything bad in, the, it was always the same stuff. He would write me his list. Um, you know, he, he did ask for sour cream. That was the thing, sour cream, because we'd make burritos. Yeah. He had a problem with sour cream and I tried to get him on the vegan sour cream, but yeah. he didn't like it, but he was a teenager by then and he was a little difficult, but for him to be having sour cream and drinking Gatorades as a teenager, I got lucky. You know, yeah. those were the only two things I was fighting. And and um, then him, he said when he was in his uh, mid-20s, he started feeling a little bad. And he, it was his diet. He changed his diet. He feels great. Wow. So did you supplement at all, like with him growing up, like mm -hmm. B12 or D? Or it's just you didn't and it still worked no, great? No, I did never gave him B12. I'm glad it worked. And he turned out amazing. Yes, he's such a good boy. He's yeah. He's apple in my eye. 
<laughs> yeah, well, this has been amazing. There's so much more we need to talk about. We have a Q&A coming yes. up next that we're going to do together with your guys' questions. You guys have all the amazing questions. What does Kara eat in a day? What about this? What about that? So stay tuned for that. Subscribe. It'll be the next video. And anything else you want to end off with? Any words of inspiration for the audience? Maybe somebody going through a hard time who wants to get healthy or just a hard time in their life or any advice or anything that you're called to share? Yes, there is, we are living in the age of YouTube. We didn't have this. I didn't have this luxury when I was younger and growing up and raising a child or going through depression or figuring out how do I eat healthy? Because when I was 18, I didn't have my mother cooking for me anymore. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do now. So <laughs> I, I, I put sprouts in, and I ate like an animal, some, a cucumber, you know, a tomato, half a tomato and a half an onion for flavor because like I didn't have my, you know, I didn't really know how to do this yet. Now there's YouTube. You have us to help you with you. We have uh, the recipe channel, cookbook. Yeah. Your cookbook's amazing. Everything you guys have oh, is amazing. All you. the books, I'll link everything down below. The products, I love the sea moss and everything you guys do. I feel like with, is with such great intention and so genuine. You know, you guys are, that's just something a lot of people commented on knowing you knew you were coming on. And a lot of people say to me, and that's how I feel. You guys are very genuine. Like you're very real. Well, I have care. That is the first syllable in my name. And I've always been so caring and nurturing. I, I love people and I want that. I want to see them, you know, feel as good as me. I want them to be happy, Aww. you know, and I love sharing anything that works for me. I share so, and, and also, you know, if you have any questions, if you're going through a tough time, I know I've bonded with some women over the years and I've stuck with them for a while, you know, not forever, but through their hard times, you know, a few weeks, a couple months, and I've stuck with them and we actually talk. Oh my God, I can't believe Kara, you're talking to me. How did I get so lucky? And I'm like, I'm human just like you. Let's just get through this, you know? And if you are going through a tough time, I am i don't mind you reaching out to me and I will hold your hand for a few weeks or a couple months, however long it takes. I love that. I love it too. I feel like I, I'm nurturing. I, I can't believe I only had one child. That's what I was telling Kevin and Ashley before we came here. I'm like, Karis, you can just tell. I'm like, guys, she's going to be so nurturing and so <laughs> yeah. so motherly. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a really feminine quality. quality. It's nice, guess, you know? Well, give yeah. me a hug. Thank you again oh, for coming on. My pleasure. You are gorgeous inside now. Thank and I hope you, you guys likewise. enjoyed this video. I hope it added some value to your day. I'm sure it did. And go give Kara and Marcus's channel a follow. It's amazing. It's legendary, very OG and incredible. So much information and i'll link their instagrams below all their stuff and we will see you guys in the next one bye bye